go once again. It's that time for the color of wine. Sponsored by loveandvines.com. Now here's your host, Sukari Bowman. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Color of Wine. I'm your host, Sukari Bowman. On today's episode, we had the privilege of speaking with Krishan Lampley. Krishan is a negotiant, a wine enthusiast, and founder of LCS Entertainment that features Love Corkscrew Wines. We had so much fun in our conversation, and we covered so many things, from her support of local vineyards in the Midwest, to her mentoring young women and budding entrepreneurs, to her wines that are produced with names like Good Times, Good Friends, Hard Knock Life, and Touch the Sky. One of my favorite quotes from Krishan is, I'm a comeback kid. I went from losing everything to joining an industry that doesn't look like me, to launching my product in major stores. I don't stop. One of Krishan's goals is to demystify wine and get people asking questions, and she is doing just that. So sit back, relax, pour yourself a big old glass of wine, and enjoy our conversation with Krishan Lampley, founder of LCS Entertainment and Love Corkscrew Wines. Krishan, welcome to The Color of Wine. I'm so excited to have you on as our guest. Oh, thank you for having me. Happy to be. I'm walking through the city of Chicago, but I'm here with you. <laughs> nice, nice. I love, I miss some of those city, you know, those city noises living in New York for 14 years and now being in Atlanta, I miss some of that. So I, I kind of welcome it. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love it. Helps me sleep at night. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It took me like six months to be able to sleep because there were no, there was no noise outside. It was really crazy. Right, right. (laughs) So we're going to go ahead and dive in because there's so much I want to talk to you about. And But what I want to start with is what was 12-year-old Krishan like? Oh, gosh, 12-year-old. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Um, You know what? 12 was awkward for me. Um, I was always that oddball. Um, I was always different. Um, I grew up actually um, in a not diverse whatsoever uh, environment. I was actually one of the only African-American kids growing up all the way till, till high school. Um, so 12-year-old Krishan was very, um, very awkward, but at the same time, I was always very vocal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never liked to, to take, you know, I wouldn't take a darn thing, you know, like, like any <laughs> challenge, um, anybody challenging me, um, they heard it. They heard it um, because my parents were so strong um, and I always had older parents than everyone else. So I was definitely more mature than most 12 year olds. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I had a lot of strength, but still um, a lot of loneliness. So I, I was the only child. So uh, definitely different. Interesting. Yeah. You know, my niece is, is an only child and I've asked her about it. I'm like, you know, do you sometimes feel a little, you know, you feel a little lonely because, you, you know, you don't have a sibling to you know, to mess with and boss around. <laughs> um, right. Like I do my brother and she's like, yeah, you know, sometimes I guess, yeah, you know, it, you, you do kind of feel like that and you, you do, you know, want a sibling at some point. But I was like, look, sometimes I love my brother to death and my sisters and, um, you know, I love all of them, but I was like, yeah, sometimes it's okay to be in a quiet house. <laughs> right. And, and I will say this, I mean, definitely as I got older, realizing being only child um, helps you explore your imagination a lot more than others. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so actually when, you know, when I look back, I, I'm actually glad I was, uh, it definitely yeah. molded me into the person I am. Yeah. So did you always want to be an entrepreneur? I think so. I think it was uh, kind of in me. Um, I definitely always wanted my own. I was always taught that having your own is, is crucial mm-hmm. uh, in whatever that looks like, or whether it's your own property, whether it's your own car, whether you, you don't rent from anybody, you own it. So mm-hmm. I've always uh, grew up in an environment where that was going to be the end result and having something that was mine. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will say, yeah, yeah, I think I was. Yeah. So, you know, you had a... Um, you had an art space in Chicago, and you were working with wine in your art space, correct? 
much. Yes. So uh, I used to own a gallery and art bar uh, in the city of Chicago. And uh, it was awesome because we were a gallery that actually had a full bar. Usually galleries are very much of, you know, you walk in and you have maybe a nice glass of wine that they serve. But we actually had a full, legit bar. So it was um, an amazing space uh, that people would come and, and just hang out in and look at beautiful art and buy beautiful art. And uh, it was a great space. So what was it about wine that captured you? I believe that it, since I was a kid, I was the one who would eat sushi. You know, I would try mm-hmm. different things. I would try caviar. So I always mm-hmm. had the palate to try something different. So wine intrigued me. Um, even like in college when, you know, people were drinking the apple martinis and the Cosmos. Mm-hmm. That didn't interest me. You know, I wanted to try different flights of, of wine. So I always had kind of that different palate and wanted to do something different. So I think wine was always intriguing. And it's definitely one of those things where once you uh, really get into it, your palate just matures so, so well. Just like I always tell the guys that drink beer, you don't want Corona anymore. You want the IPAs. Right. So it, it, my palate just started to mature and uh, I just had just an amazing appreciation for wine. Mm-hmm. So... As you were exploring it, was there one point in time where you thought, you know what, I want to do my own thing. I want to make my own wine. You know, it was the destruction of the gallery. Um, We Mm. actually closed uh, due to an awful flood that was caused by baby wipes. So imagine being your business being shut down because of baby wipes. Oh my god! They flushed. Yeah, yeah. The condo owners above us flushed non-vital, biodegradable uh, baby wipes down the toilet, so it flushed into our storefront. Uh, so we closed, you know, that the insurance doesn't cover baby wipes. Yeah. Right. So um, in, in that, you know, sense of, okay, this is not going to work for me. I'm going dark in this, this ugly place of losing everything. Mm-hmm. Um, people, people would still, you know, reach out to me like, Krishan, what's the best wine to pick? Because we had one, Chicago's Best is one of the best wine lists in the city. So, mm-hmm. and I wrote the wine list. So I had a knack for it. So it was this people bugging me since I was closed and I went in this dark place. And at that point I said, okay, so this isn't over yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there, there's something else more for me to do. And for some reason my heart's still beating. Right. So I need to keep going. Um, and my appreciation for wine just grew. The connect that I had from the gallery and from working in, in sales and distribution as well. Um, it just was, it just made sense. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? Fine, let's do it. People mm-hmm. laughed at me, but I still did it. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because when you, there's some saying out there that says, you know, when you talk about what you want to do and, you know, people laugh at the end of the day, you're the one that ends up laughing when you succeed at something that people think is just so crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's just a dynamic. And and as well as things, you're going to fail. There's going to be times that you're going to do something you're going to fail, especially as an entrepreneur. I've failed over and over and over and over and over again. Um, but for some reason I said, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to get up and do it again. So there's a little bit of craziness in me. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's kind of what happened. People are like, yeah, you can't have your own vineyard. And, and how are you going to do all that? What are you doing making wine in your bathtub? Like, nope. I'm going to use all the connections I have and I'm going to create something of my own. And mm-hmm. 60,000 bottles sold later. Girl, here, I'm giving you a high five and a cheer and everything <laughs> else on that because in this in this market that is huge that is absolutely yeah. huge it, it has I, been you know, an amazing are, world win. <laughs> yeah i mean we are so proud of you for everything that you are that you're accomplishing and that you're doing it you're just you know you're kind of you're doing the damn thing and we're proud of you thank you thank you I, and it, I, it's one of those things that i don't know any other way <laughs> i don't right. know any other way but to do it <laughs> right right so when you're making your wine, where do you source your grapes from? So I'm sourcing from three different vineyards that I utilize. Um, mm-hmm. For my Concord and Niagara, I source actually out of Illinois. There's some great uh, wineries and vineyards in the state of Illinois that people don't even know exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, my Riesling and Pinot Grigio, I source from Michigan. And my Cabernet Sauvignon, I source from California. So I utilize three different uh, vineyards. Um, and, uh, and areas that, that I purchased my grapes. And uh, so it, it just, I'm, I'm all over the place. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a lot of communication, a lot of traveling, uh, yeah. a lot of work. But I love the fact that you're sourcing locally. I think it dispels this myth that, you know, if you want good grapes, you got to go to California. You know what I mean? I, I think exactly. 
it dispels that. And I love that that's, you know, that you're supporting the local, you know, local farming industry, I think is huge. And and that was part of my, my motto. Um, when I worked in sales and distribution, I had very large territory, very large. Um, I had over 250 accounts. And, and what I consistently heard was we want to support local. We, w- we don't want all the wines that you can easily find at any grocery store or at any restaurant. They're always the same label. So I knew going in that, uh, that I definitely was going to have small batch. Uh, very boutique wines. And then on the other end, when I owned an art gallery, I heard the same thing. So as an owner and as a salesperson, why am I hearing the exact same things from all these people on the retail restaurant side? So I just knew that was the way to go. And and I knew I needed to give, uh, pay homage to some of these amazing, amazing vineyards in the Midwest. And, and that's what I've done. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's, I think that's a beautiful thing. You know, so when you're, after you, you know, after you've sourced your grapes, do you go up, do you go to the vineyards to do maybe barrel tasting or do they send you samples? How does that work for you? As much as I can, I go. Uh, but th- right now they have my flavor profile and they've had it for five years okay. now. Mm-hmm. So they know exactly what to make. It's almost like having that recipe and uh, exactly. they know exactly how to make it. Yeah, secret sauce. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. that secret sauce so yes originally I was definitely traveling and because I have to taste a lot so there's only so right. much they can send um, so but at, at this point now we can send you know just a couple of bottles and, and I can pick from there what makes sense for, for Love Court right. Strip right so there are there are some wines that you have and you can actually feel the you know the soul of the winemaker in the wine um and you know as a winemaker how do you how do you get you know that part of you into your wine it you know what and and that that's the catch for me my secret is it's not about me Mm. it's about the consumer um Mm. i've been in marketing and sales for 20 plus years um, and you learn that it's not about your style. It's not about your flavor profile. It's not about what you like. It's not about you. <laughs> it's about yeah. everyone else. So I was able to say to myself, okay, within my wine, what can I find? What commonality can I find that everyone will appreciate? And it's one of those things. Wine is subjective. You're not going to like everything I do. Just like you're not going to like everything any vineyard does. And that's okay. We're not trying to get you to like everything, <laughs> but right. what you can do is, is, is respect it. And I said, okay, I need certain uh, flavor profiles that are kind of right in between, just mm-hmm. in between, not too intimidating to my demographic. And that is the 90% of people that are out there, people that right. don't know that much about wine, but want to. I don't want to push those cheap two buck chunks of the world. I want that mid-tier, really good quality wine um, that people aren't intimidated about. And that's what I found in Love Corkscrew. And uh, like I said, 60,000 miles later, I must know a little bit about what I'm doing. Huh? Oh, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> it is working. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm doing something right. So, <laughs> so some winemakers go the restaurant the restaurant route um, right, right. when they're trying to get their wines out there and you're taking the retail route was that a strategic decision for you uh, very much so um, again being in the sale in sales uh, for so many years um, I knew that that's the area that I needed to to, uh, to rest in um, mm-hmm. for me um, restaurants are great. It, it's more of a rites of passage to mm-hmm. say I'm at this big, amazing, you know, six star restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's great. Hey, hey, more power to you. I wish I could. Um, but what I knew is that the attraction to my wine were not just the flavor profiles, but the number one reason why people buy wine is the label. Number two, the price. Number three, the taste. Right. So I knew I wanted to hit the market um, because of my labels. That's not something you're going to see at the restaurant. You're not going to see we're moving on up you know, at a restaurant, you're not going to see, you know, the label, good times with your friends. They're wrapping a, a cloth around it and pouring. Right. So I knew that attraction of my wine was a beauty, beautiful colors. I knew they'd stuck out on the shelf, uh, in the aisles, at, at liquor stores, at wine shops, uh, and grocery stores. So I knew that that's where I rested and I was okay with that. Mm-hmm. It is just fine with me that I move bottles. Um, right. and I like that as well as restaurant menus tend to change. Mm-hmm. They change seasonally. They change when, um, you know, a new uh, sommelier gets on board. They change it when a new manager. They change when the restaurant closes and reopens as a new restaurant. 
So I didn't want, um, I couldn't afford as a small business uh, to be in and out of restaurants so quickly. As well, they don't take in a lot. You know, I'm not moving a lot of cases. Yeah. So they don't have room. They simply don't have room um, as well as they, they like to change out their menus. So I, it was just my way uh, of saying this is where Love Pork Scoop fits mm-hmm. and this is where I want to be. And hey, I love it. Mm. So are you, because you're, you're in that retail world, are you seeing any trends in that retail space when it comes to how consumers are purchasing wine now? The, what, what has changed now is the retail spaces. You know, there's so many stores closing, consolidating, um, uh, you know, not as big square footage anymore. People are buying online so much nowadays. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I knew that with, within the retail space um, that consumers are, they're moving quickly, but they're also getting a lot of things in one space, like the targets of the world, right? You, mm-hmm. you want a one-stop shop. Right. Uh, so I knew that that would benefit Love Corkscrew just because I'm eye catching. Love Corkscrew catches the eye. So I think the consumer is moving quickly, quicker than normal, as well as the consumer is using social media a lot. Mm-hmm. So they're when they're walking through the aisles, they're like, wait a minute, I saw Love Corkscrew on Facebook, or I've seen this. They call me the wine lady. I've seen this wine lady. <laughs> and so, so they're stopping and looking on the shelves and, and recognizing my labels and my bottles. Right. Uh, so I think the consumer is definitely quick. They're savvy. Um, they got to get in and out because they're busy. Everybody's so, so, so busy, right? Mm-hmm. So, so they're not, uh, they're not window shoppers anymore. Right. Right. No, I agree. It's, you know, we have a, a target here in Atlanta that has, um, a wine aisle and there mm-hmm. are times where I go in there and I'm like, Hey, you know, when you go into target and you say you're running to get two things and you end up with yep. a basket full of stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, you know, I'm having this tonight. Let me just see what they've got over in their wine aisle. You know, I have a wine store and I go to all these wine clubs and all this other kind of stuff. But, you know, there are times where you're just like kind of running in and you're like, oh, you know, let me just see what's down here. Let me see if I can find something. So I agree with you completely that it it, it has become more of a one-stop shop kind of thing. You know, Absolutely. and I think that, that people, winemakers and producers can benefit from that if they're in the right space. So Correct. You're, in, Correct. you're in Target in a couple of targets in in the Chicago area, right? I'm in I'm in three locations. I'm in three targets in the Chicagoland area. One of which um, happens to be the uh, most profitable target in the country, um, oh. and that's the one um, on Elston, twenty six fifty six North Elston. Um, so yeah, I just landed three Target accounts, and uh, the business in those accounts have been absolutely amazing. That Absolutely amazing. Awesome. Just in a, sh- a small, 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 we're talking a matter of weeks um, that I've been there and I've moved through so much product. So uh, I'm very grateful. It was actually two years in the making, though. A lot yeah. of people think, oh, cool, that was easy. No, no, it was two years of me begging them <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> to get in just to those three stores. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy, but yeah, I'm very excited I mean- to be a most I think that's fantastic, and and I can't wait for it to for your wines to be in more targets. Um, and you know, the interesting thing is when you say that, and you're like, it took two years. It's people don't necessarily see that, right? You know, they see the success, but they don't see everything behind it. Like I've I've had this conversation with a couple of other winemakers. I was like, you know, when you look in the wine magazines or the wine focused magazines and you see the ads and it's like the person standing on the the big expansive deck and they're just looking out on the vineyards. I'm like, yeah, that's all real cute. But somebody's right. down there <laughs> pruning those vines, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. There's so much behind it. And on, on my end as negotiant, understand I'm dealing with the distributor. I'm right. dealing with their sales staff. I'm not selling it. I, I legally can't walk in and say, yeah, taking it and ship it. No. Right. Uh, so I have to work with the distributor. I have to work with ambassadors. Now I hire ambassadors, so I have to work with them. But I'm mm-hmm. also a one-stop shop. So I'm also the social media. I'm also the one answering questions. I'm, I'm very grateful. I have a publicist. Very grateful. I have an operations manager. But people seek, because they can touch me. Like I said, I'm walking down the streets of Chicago. Um, yeah. Because they can touch me, uh, it tends to be, we want Krishan. You know, right. so there's a lot, there's a lot that I have to give and there's a lot that's asked of me. Right. Uh, so this is not easy. This is not no. easy. So how do you, how do you balance that with 
with, you know, self-care and, and taking care of yourself, you know, while your business is growing and prospering. I've always worked off of the notion that I am my business. I, I am Love Court Screw. Mm -hmm. So Love Court Screw brings me peace um, because mm -hmm. it's what I do and it's who I am. Um, because I'm able to touch people, you know, I, I'm able to still be in those social scenes. I'm able to still, you know, have dinner, you know, every now and then. I, I, my, my big thing is movies. I love going to the show. So I do definitely find a little what they call me time. But at the same time, I don't look at it as, as my way of getting away from that stress because I live and breathe the business. Right. Um, and it's just who I am. Who yeah, I am. And I think when you have that, when it is a part of you and when it's something that you enjoy so much that, you know, you, you don't necessarily need to, to get away from it so much as just to make Not sure at all. You know you're getting sleep, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Right, right. That's the one little catch is sleep. That yeah. one little catch. And the funny thing is, I so I'm one of those crazy freaks that I'm up at five o'clock in the morning, like mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, but but when people think, oh my God, Krishan, you're nonstop work, 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 work. Yeah, but I'm still in bed by 1030. Right. But I may be up hours before you guys are even thinking about getting up. <laughs> right, right. I'm completing emails. Um, and the great thing um, is because I don't have a four walls, because I don't have a brick and mortar, um, as far as a wine shop or anything's concerned, I'm able to function a lot off my cell phone. I'm able to mm -hmm. function a lot, lot, you know, off my laptop. Right. So I'm able to, to do a lot of things on the go mm -hmm. um, and still be you know, out and about, um, getting everything I need to get done. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, but it's who I am. Right. So you're part of a pretty small group of people as an African American woman winemaker. Um, so how does it feel when you are the only one in the room? It is, um, invigorating um, and, mm -hmm. and it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier about being that, that 12 year old Yeah, I've always been the, the oddball I've always been the, the weird one I've always been you know the odd man out so it, it's, it's what I know mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I do believe growing up always molds you into who you're going to be when you're an adult and you can look back at certain things and be like oh now I get it Right. Um, so I actually enjoyed it. I, I was actually just recently, um, a matter of days ago, in Madison, Wisconsin, and I was speaking at the Madison Chamber of Commerce. And I was speaking in front of, oh, I would say about 30 to 40 board members. Mm -hmm. There was maybe only two brown people in there. Otherwise, it was just me. Okay. And it was what I do. You know, I think sometimes I would say the average person meaning somebody who's not feeling comfortable in speaking um, mm -hmm. in public and things like that would be nervous as well as, you know, being the only, you know, black woman standing there. Mm -hmm. I was fine. Yeah. I was okay. I was okay. And I said, you know, at the end of the day, this is what I do know. When mm -hmm. you're in situations like that, you tell them what you need. It's called the ask, right? You ask. Mm -hmm. You ask for what you need. You don't do the extra blah, blah, blah. And it's either going to be yes or no. If not, you keep it moving. Right. Keep it moving. And, and I don't have a problem doing that. I've always been very A-type. I've always been, uh, you know, very strong in that sense because I had to, I was forced to do it as a kid. Uh, so it, it, it just uh, comes naturally to me. So there have been all of these public, or there's been some very public conversations recently about the inclusion of women and women of color in the wine industry. Um, are you seeing and feeling any progress being made in, in this area? The progress that I see being made is, is women. Um, we can talk about several movements that are happening between Me Too movements um, and, and women getting amazing roles lately and, and just being recognized for so many great things. So I think there definitely is now an openness to see Oh, wait, yeah, there is some black women in, in wine. Oh, wait, there are some Somalis out there that are brown people. So mm -hmm. I, I do believe that the doors are opening in so many different angles, but more so as women mm -hmm. than anything. Um, and hey, at this point, I, I always say I'm going to break all glass ceilings so there's no more to be broken. Right. Um, and I will continue to do that the best way I can. Um, and, and I look for, for women when I'm, when I leave this earth, I, I look for, for women to continue on uh, with what, what hopefully I have uh, been part of, and that's a movement to, to grow in this sector as African-American women. 
Mm. You know, it, it's definitely one of those things where, you know, I think the conversations are necessary and I, I, I'm liking the way the conversations are happening because they're happening in a way that it, it, it specifically in the wine space, they're happening in a happening in a way where they are respectful, but they're also very clear um, about where we are today and what we need to do to continue to move forward. Whether it's you know women and women of color. Um, so I was talking to a friend of mine and I said, you know, it, it's going. I'm not very patient, so it's going a little slow to me, but it's probably supposed to be going a little bit at the pace that it's going. Um, but the conversation needs to keep happening. You know, yeah. like we can't shy away from the conversation and think that one conversation is going to be the end of it. No, no, it's not. No, it's not going to be enough until there's absolutely, like I said, absolutely nothing, nothing to solve. No exactly. issues to solve. And, and I don't know if I'm going to see that in my lifetime. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we can hope on that. <laughs> We can hope. We can, we can hope, hope on that. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're involved in organizations where you are a mentor and you're supporting young women and budding entrepreneurs. Um, you know, why is that? Why is that important for you? Why is that part of part of who you are and your passion? Um, it's as simple as um, I remember, you know, being a younger entrepreneur um, and. I'm definitely in, in a hard, right between a rock and a hard place with not having any mentors. I don't have any. I don't have any mentors. Um, my parents, so those are my mentors. Um, but as far as the industry is concerned, that's very hard to come by. So I said to myself, when I go to these events, what always drives me nuts is people always, they say, they use this word empower or encourage or motivate. But they really never tell you exactly what you need to do. There's nothing pertinent that you take away from these different events. So I said to myself, I am going to not only be transparent with my journey, I'm not only going to be transparent with what I have to deal with day to day, but if you ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you a suggestion on exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. Now, there's only so far I can go into certain things. I'm not a lawyer, you know, <laughs> right. um, there, there's certain things I'm not an accountant, but I'm at least going to lead you to the water. Um, and that was always my biggest pet peeve. Uh, with panel discussions of people that just mm -hmm. talk about themselves for, for, for like, you're talking about yourself too much. How about do something to help the people in the audience? They know you. They wouldn't be there to hear you speak if they didn't know how great you were. So now let's channel that into actually helping someone. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I like being involved in organizations and, and truly mentor to say, this is what you need to do to get to this next level. And I love every second of it. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And, you know, being in the corporate space, I see that all the time. You know, we have a mentor program and, you know, some of the mentees, when you when they when you're matched with them, they may come in and you start having a conversation and kind of explaining and giving them suggestions on how to address, um, you know, moving forward in their career or to address an issue that they may be having with, you know, a manager or a coworker or something like that. And they kind of look at you crazy. And I'm like, you know, what, what's the issue? And they're like, well, nobody's really ever given me a concrete answer right. as far as what I need right. to do to deal with the situation that I'm in or to get where I'm trying to go. Right. And that always people need help. me. Yeah. I, do, I don't get it. I don't get it either. And, and I really, I really question sometimes the definition of help. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you just have to have to reach out. And, and that's what I decided to do. Love Course 2 is bigger than me. Um, so if, if, if there's a way I can affect and, and help people, um, I will, I'll try my darndest to. Mm. So what's been the toughest lesson to learn as an entrepreneur for you so far? I would say what type of entrepreneur I am. Um, mm. I've been through two failed partnerships. So I realized that that's not for me. That's not my jam. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely need to, to function um, as a sole owner, um, but I need to have a team. Um, I use the analogy of imagine running in a race, um, and instead of trying to jump into each other's lane, you actually run the race in your own lane, side by side, and you all make it to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And that is what I'm utilizing that's the success of Love Corps. So I have a team. I have people that don't step in my lane, and I don't step in theirs, because mm -hmm. I'm not an expert at that, whatever that is. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Like I said, I have an accountant. They deal with that. That's great. I I, I can let them do their job. I have an operations manager. He's great with supplier diversity. I have a publicist. She's great with editing and and, and getting different things done. I'm not in their lane. I'm just going to focus on exactly what Krishan Lampy knows how to do. And that's Love Corps Group. And that's sales and marketing. And that's um, people. That's uh, public speaking. All the things I know I'm good at. Mm-hmm. And that to me was the toughest part uh, in, in entrepreneurship, that what did it look like? What type of entrepreneur was I? And when you get caught up in legalities of it, man, you learn. Yeah. <laughs> you learn real quick. You learn real quick. Learn real quick. A lot of money lost, but lessons learned. Right. But, I, you know, that's such a great point because I think that's how we tend to get overwhelmed is when we try to step outside of what we are really good at and think that we can make it happen better because it's us, right? Because it's yourself. You're like, yeah, I can just take yeah, care of that. Yeah, it's my baby. I'll just it. do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to yeah. do that. And then you right. become and then overwhelmed. You get overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wait a minute. Okay, no, I'm now I'm doing too much. Now I'm doing too much. Now I am exhausting myself. So letting go of that control. I, I'll tell you one thing. I am the most, the, the biggest control freak, the, the biggest yeah. micromanager you know. But it gets to a point where I'm like, wait a, wait a minute, Krishan. I need to step back. Mm-hmm. I need to step back for a second. And actually, I need somebody else to take that lane. Because you know what? I can be using my skill set to do something bigger and greater to move the company forward mm-hmm. instead of just wanting to feel like I'm in control. Right. And so that, that's, that's lesson. Mm-hmm. Is having that team around you what helps you to kind of balance that, like the business side and the creative side of what you do? Yes. Yeah. It has beyond helped with my creativity. Um, because again, that's what I do. I'm a creator. Love Corkscrew is created by me. I'm the one who controls all my social media. Anything you see posted, that's me. So, yes, it, once I relinquish control over certain areas that I'm not an expert, expert in, I'm able to now really, really create and grow my baby in the areas that I know what to do. There's, it's, it's awesome. It's like one of those things where things start coming to you when you start letting go. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, it's like, boing, all these lights are going off in my head um, to create the next thing. And it's so funny. Um, I just introduced uh, Love Corks Through uh, Body Butter. I and saw it that. I'm so yeah. excited. <laughs> <laughs> and you and so many people. And the funny thing is, it came to me seriously out of, just out of the blue. And I'm like, wait a minute. My motto is, indulgence knows no boundaries. And my company operates off the, the thought process that, we touch all five senses. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what have I not touched yet? I'm like, oh, feel, touch. I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. Oh my gosh. And then it was so funny. I was just taking a shower one day and I'm just lathering in this body butter <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. And I'm like, wait a minute. What if I had wine scented body butter? I kid you not. I just launched yesterday and, and I, I sold <laughs> As of yet, like it took a matter of hours for me to sell out of this product that I just created. And also my thought process was, why don't I hit some varietals that I don't carry and I don't see myself carrying in my line anytime soon? I'm right. like, oh, here we go. Moist Moscato, mm-hmm. Body Bordeaux, uh, Rubbing Rosé. So yeah. I just thought to play, to still connect with the company, um, but still take a play on, on, on wine and it all makes sense. So my products all make sense. Yes. Uh, So yeah, my creative side is just grown. Yeah. 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 It's all so very, it's also very cohesive. And I saw, when I saw that on social media today, I look, first of all, the picture is fire. Okay. The picture that she put out there. I was like, (laughs) okay, you know what? That picture is, that picture is off the chain. And then I thought, Oh my God, body butter. <laughs> right, right. That was just my teaser. That was my teaser. I just hashtagged yes. LCS body butter. But yes. yeah, and, and I and I also realized, and, and this is definitely some advice for entrepreneurs out there. People follow you and they follow your story and people are going to respond to you. Mm-hmm. So when I said, I'm going to put my back out there, that's my back. But I said, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm say, you know what? This is me. I'm using this butter. It's making my back feel great and silky. <laughs> right. But, but I knew that people were going to be attracted to 
me and what I do because they know this is my baby. This is right. my baby. Um, so yeah, I decided to just go out there. Hey, I'm not perfect. I'm not no perfect size four and I don't care. But I said at the end of the day, I'm healthy and uh, this is who I am. This is my baby. And hey, I use my body butter. So there you go. <laughs> right. But I, I think that's, I think you're absolutely right. People are following you. They're following your story. They're following your journey. They're following the journey of Love Corkscrew. They're following absolutely. all of that. And I love it when I see in, you know, the, the winemaker or the, the psalm or the importer and distributor in their post. I love to see their faces. And it, yes, I think it yes. makes a huge difference. When I saw that picture, I was like, first of all, it is a fantastic picture and it's absolutely beautiful. And girl, who, who, who of us is really a size four for real? Um, there right? are some out there, so I'm not trying to be salty, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> right. That's not the norm. It's not the norm. That's not the norm. <laughs> but I'm like, I enjoy food and wine too much. It's just not going to happen. Absolutely. And I'm good with that. Um, but I think. I think that's fantastic because it shows that this is you, this is your brand, this is who you are, and it's beautiful, and it's you're going to be out there, and that's just that just is what it is, and that's I think what people want to see. And and, and it's beyond who I am. It, it's just, I always say, you know, like I said earlier, this my vulnerability, uh, my transparency uh, makes my brand, and and I want to show that true and true, um, and I keep very 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 you know solid to it mm. and like I said hey this is me this is who I am so you're gonna look at my back <laughs> right but I work I, I work my back off I, I work right. hard um I work my my business um it's who I am and I am like I said I am love corkscrew so uh, that's what I'm bringing to the world and we're accepting that and we're thank we're you supporting <laughs> <behind> that. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you Outside of your own wines, are there some wines that you really enjoy that you absolutely love to drink? Oh gosh, absolutely. there's so many. There's tons mm. that I love to drink. Um, I, I would say probably Cast Twenty Three is one of my favorites. Um, mm. I love a good Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. Um, anything. I, yeah, I, I go for for yes. I know. I know a lot of people think it's, it's gitchy, but I love Stag mm. Um I, I, I really really enjoy their Cab. Um, but I, I love heavier wines. Um, I love Chianti's and Bordeaux's and Merlot's of the world. But, oh, yeah, when, when I'm in wine shops and walking through, I totally pick up all types of wine. Um, I've, I've been really into Vouvray lately. Um, so, yes, I do drink things outside of Love Corkscrew. And, and mm. I, I just love wine. I just love wine. So, absolutely. Yeah, and there's so much out there. There's so, so much, much great so wine. much too much too much I, I can't I can't hit them all um, and there's so many different varietals out that I I can't even pronounce and I'm looking at wait what when did right. this come to play <laughs> so I, I can't even lie yes there's tons I have no idea um so but but I love trying different ones and, and I'm, I'm definitely a lover of just about all so uh yeah yep, bring it on I love them all yeah I think at this point I have to get I po posted that I needed to get a bigger wine fridge because I now have wine like downstairs in my basement on the floor because it's cooler down there. Yes, <laughs> yes. My wine Love fridge it. is full. It's down in the Love basement. It. It's in the fridge. I'm like, oh my God, I have got to get a bigger wine fridge. <laughs> now, people, I'm going to tell a little, a little secret. If you come go into my house, you will not find hardly any wine. I am the kind where when I bring it in, I'm going to enjoy it with somebody. You drink it, yeah. I drink it. I drink yeah. it. I, the only time I'll have an excessive amount. Now, obviously, I have a lot of love corks for enough. Right. But when I have the only time I have an excessive amount is if I say, okay, I'm about to have, you know, a, a house party and cook for somebody mm -hmm. or something. And then I'll, ha I'll have um, a lot. I like Cayman. Um, so right. I'll have a, a lot around. But other than that, no, people are like, oh, my God, where's all your wine? I'm like, um, we can I go to the store that. and go grab right. some. <laughs> Otherwise, <it's> like, <laughs> I have beautiful glasses, beautiful glasses. So, uh, yeah, no, no, we, we got to go get some because um, yeah. I just enjoy doing that. So <laughs> I think that's wonderful. It, it's funny because my cousin, I posted a picture and he was like, so um, why haven't you called me to come over? I was like, listen here, I forget. You know, I live by myself, so I forget. I'm like, okay, super, you cannot, you can drink all that wine, but, you know, not and be functional. 
So right, <laughs> right. How's that gonna work? Yeah, I was right. like, this, this is not gonna work. So you're gonna have to kind of space it out a little bit. Um, that is, but funny. I get. It's like I get on this chair and I'm like, oh my god, I want to try this. I want to try this. I want to try this. I haven't right. heard of this yep. before, and I want to do that. So I get. Oh, I get it. And it gets here, and I'm like, okay, now I gotta drink it. Okay, wait a minute. How are you gonna so consume gonna all that? Right. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So that's why I tend not to. I'm like, okay, I'm only going to do it when I'm going to drink that that bottle that that evening yes. or the following day. So yes, so that's yes. how I, I that's how I roll. <laughs> yeah, they've started to look at me at my nine to five, and they're like, "What is going?" You know, I've got two cases of wine that have been delivered, and they're like, "What are you doing?" I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, also the great thing is you'll always have a gift. You always have Absolutely. the ability to have a gift to bring to to someone's house. So that's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great way to think about it. <laughs> yep. Always that gift. Always that gift. <laughs> so where can folks, where can they purchase your wine right now? If they're not so in, love in the culture. Chicago area. Yeah. So if you are not in uh, the surrounding Illinois area, uh, uh, specifically um, Chicago, um, you can order via my wine club. So a lot of people, I, I, I try to post as much as possible, but what happens is I have a, such a huge fan base in Chicago that they can go to the store and purchase it. Wow. Um, but my wine club is actually amazing. Um, it's only $55 quarterly, and not only are you getting all the wines by the end of the year, so by the end of the year you've, you've collected all of Love Corks through and then some, some on repeat, but in addition to that you get the full-size soy candle that I offer. Um, you get a cookbook. You get the, the great cookbook that I did and, and we paired some of the wines and additional varietal picks that I had as well as now, as of yesterday, you'll also be receiving the body butter. So you're getting, for $55, you're getting like this beautiful care package of a lot of stuff uh, with, within uh, the wine club. But in addition to that, for those outside of the Chicago land area that just wants to try Love Corkscrew, I have a trial pack um, where you just pick two um, that you think fit your uh, flavor profile. And uh, I'll, I'll ship you those two. And then for those who just want to just go for it and, and purchase Love Corkscrew, I have a four pack option. Um, and then now uh, you can just take all the Love Corkscrew wine. So I do ship, it ships straight to your doorstep with no problem. That is fantastic. And I'm going to have to sign up for the wine club because I want all the goodies too. I want the candle. It, I, want I mean, the cookbook, it's I want the like, body butter. I want all of that. Yes. You get everything. <laughs> so funny when, when people sign up, they're like, oh my God, I have multiple packages. Yes. You're not just getting the wine. You're going to get a separate UPS package with like tons of goodies in it. Uh, so that's what definitely differentiates uh, my wine club um, that you're getting all of Love Club too. You're getting the whole company um, and you're able to experience everything that I have to offer. But I think that's great because wine is so much about the experience. So when you can sit down, you know, whether in your bathtub with your boo thing or whatever. Absolutely. And, you Absolutely. Know, open up a bottle of wine and burn the candle and cook something from the cookbook and then, you know, use the body butter for whatever you choose to use it for. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think that's exactly. just creating that experience that is that wine is it's all about that. It's all about And that's what I wanted. That and that's the motto. Indulgence knows no boundaries. Mm -hmm. And and that's what Love Corks Crew brings. And uh, I'll be excited to, to really uh, have people experience outside of, of Illinois to really experience Love Corkscrew. And like I said, you're supporting me as, as an African-American woman uh, business. I'm the one actually packing this. People are like, oh, okay, so is your distributor packing? Who's, who's doing that? No, no, no. <laughs> Krishan Lampley is packing your wine club membership with love. I have the packing tape. I am the one doing it. UPS is picking it up from my door. So, so no. Now, not a company now. I was Literally, it's LCS Entertainment, my company. But yes, I am physically doing everything so people know that I'm doing it with love and appreciation and uh, you are supporting me and uh, and I look forward to, to just bringing Love Corks to the world. Yeah. I mean, I just, I think it's so beautiful and I think that it is actually ingenious to create an experience with your own products. I just think, I'm like, it, it, it amazes me that nobody else is really doing it like you're doing it. You know, it's, it's the one thing that I would say, you know what, I'm not recreating the wheel, but what I am doing 
is bringing a touch of exactly who I am. And I think that always resonates. No matter what you do, whatever your profession is, whatever your field is, if you give them you, it will always feel special and different. Absolutely. People have wine. People have body butter. People have candles. But I'm bringing that whole love culture experience, and that's who I am. I'm making sure it all makes sense. I'm not the beauty shop that's also a pet shop, that's also a carry purses, that, that also sells clothes, that also is like, no, 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 that's also a travel agency. No, no. I'm bringing you the full gamut of love books to and everything makes sense. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm bringing. Yeah, it all, it, it's all just so cohesive. It's all just that. That's what I, that's what I went for. And I think that's what I did. So yay. <laughs> Because again, you you're doing the damn thing. I, I got it. Yeah, you you just doing it. You just doing thank it. You, thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. So what's next for you and for Love Corkscrew? Love Corkscrew looks to go national. Um, like I said, yes, we're able to ship nationally uh, through VR Wine Club. Um, but we're looking to hopefully uh, eventually get picked up by a national distributor. Um, that is not easy. Um, and not only is it not easy, but it has to it has to be a deal that makes sense. Um, in, a, in a perfect world, um, we can get picked up through Target stores and, and they hook us up with a national distributor. Um, but right now, I just need to continue growing. I need to uh, continue exposure of the brand. Not everybody knows I exist. Um, I'm very, very lucky to have the people that do know I exist um, outside of, of the Illinois area, but there's still a long, long, long journey. There's still a long way to go. So I hope to go national. Um, I've been doing a lot of traveling lately uh, for different women empowerment events. I, I definitely get a lot of gigs uh, keynote speaking, and I love every second of it. Um, so hopefully just more traveling and, uh, like I said, love close to going national in, in big ways and actually being at your Target stores, being right. at your Whole Foods out there. Um, actually, you guys being able to touch me on the shelf. So uh, hopefully uh, that'll happen soon, and I just got to keep – Keep fighting until I do. Yeah. And we'll keep pushing. I mean, you know, Thank we'll you. do what we can um, kind of on that outer circle to just keep pushing towards that. For like you. I said, just and spread me. the word. All, yeah. all I need you guys to do is spread the word. Social media mm-hmm. is the reason why I love Fox to have sold and, and why I can't afford the, the big marketing companies of the world. Mm-hmm. So um, mm-hmm. just social media and spreading the word and, and uh, people watching what goes on and uh, and bringing people back to my website to, to see what I have to offer. That just means the world. Right. So, well, we're at the point in our interview that we call the last five sips. And it's right. five little quick fire questions. No pressure though. Okay. I don't want, sure. I don't want you thinking about it and you know, while you're walking on the streets. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. No, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> so if money were no object, what bottle of wine would you splurge on and why? Oh, gosh. Whatever the most expensive bottle of Chianti is, I want it. <laughs> Whatever it is. I, yeah, I want it. Just let me taste it. Just let me have it. Let, let me just lick the side of, of the glass. Like, I would be more than happy. That is one area I do spend money on, and that's food. And You know, some people have obsession with, you know, purses or clothes or shoes. No, I love a good restaurant with a good bottle of wine. So, Chianti, yeah. anything, I'm good. Yeah, nice. So, who would you love to share a bottle with, living or deceased? Living. Wow. I think I would love to share a bottle with. Oh, that's a hard one. Um, you know, I I would say uh, just a little celebrity crush that I've always had, mm-hmm. um, and that that would be uh, Sade. Ooh. She is just like the most amazing, most elegant creature to me. Yes. <laughs> and and yes. I just so grew up and, and had every last CD she ever did. And she's so elegant. Like, I would love to be, like, sitting in Europe somewhere, you know, at a chateau or something, like, having a sip with her. Like, that would just be <laughs> unreal. I know it's weird, but... <laughs> no, I think <laughs> like, that's that, fantastic. That. And that, you know, elegant, and that's like, so- that's the first time, Krishan, that anybody has ever said her. You are the first person that has ever said Shade. And I think it is so, I, I don't think people think about it because she's so under the radar. 
She makes yes. beautiful music and is a beautiful woman, and she just does her thing. And she's like, okay, now I'm going to step back and I'm going to go do this. And I'm going to chill and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life. Yeah. Right. And right. that is just so incredibly sexy to me. And that and that is just how, how I see myself, uh, you know, when I do retire, just kind of flying under the radar. Like, and, right. you know, I don't know, just sit on a rocking chair in the middle of a vineyard. But, um, but yeah, she just has just the epitome of elegance. Um, and, that, and that's what I see. I think that's so definitely shut up. <laughs> that's great. So, and, and this is kind of a tough question that, not a tough question, but it's a question that I think a lot of people think is really the answer is just um, you kind of automatically know what the answer is. But what are some of the things that you do or read to keep up to speed on what's happening in the wine industry, in the wine space? Um, definitely, yes. Some of the basics, uh, mm-hmm. following a lot of uh, things on social media, um, mm-hmm. as well as um, I, I'm not a big sit and read, you know, the wine magazine. Yeah, I don't tend to do that. Um, I'm definitely a visual person as far as I, I want to touch things. I want to mm-hmm. go places. Um, so I tend to definitely do go to a lot of restaurants, ask them what's hot right now. Right. Um, you know, have a glass of, of what they suggest for real, for real, not not where they what they just want to sell up because I'm a salesperson, so I know what right. they're trying to do. Right. So no, I want to know what is everybody asking for. Um, mm-hmm. So I enjoy doing that um, and just uh, just seeing seeing what's out there. You know, it's amazing what you will see on social media, uh, mm-hmm. and just me being in the wine industry, the algorithm for for Facebook and such to show me so many things in the wine industry is I, I see a lot. Yeah, I see a lot. Um, And I think it's coming off of being so snobbish. Um, It's not so serious. Mm -hmm. Um, When I saw the the hot thing of people doing wine cocktails, I'm like, what? You know, you're actually mixing wine with what? And when I saw saw the the freeze wing and things like that, I'm like, what is happening? But I get it. I get it. It's not as, it doesn't have to be so intimidating, so serious. Yet, I will go to some of those places with the best wine list, supposedly. I mean, it's all subjective now, um, mm-hmm. but I will go to those places just to see what's happening. So I, I try to touch, feel, go um, as much as my pockets allow me to um, and, and see what's, what's out there. Yeah. You know, I, I saw a new and I'll, I'll send it to you. I saw a new cocktail recipe that I had never seen before. And it's called like the Rosé Royale. And I'm a Rosé fanatic. Um, and but it's mixed with grapefruit liqueur. And I was like, really? So just because of that, I'm so intrigued by it. I was like, okay, this weekend, I'm going to go get everything to make that dang drink. Because it sounds, (laughs) I'm like, it sounds so good. And I, I haven't been in the past a big wine and cocktail person i mean the the right the craziest i get is like with a bellini or something <laughs> right 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 <laughs> that's funny but, but i was like you know i'm gonna have to check this out because it just sound it just sounded so intriguing so i completely i completely get that yes, i was just like no like, what are you doing you- yeah like why are you doing right. that but then you have to say to yourself, okay, stop it. Stop right, it, stop. Right. Just enjoy, <laughs> enjoy. There's all types of things out there, and, and we just overthink stuff. I say, don't don't think about it. Don't overthink it. Just drink it. Just drink it. it it's all going to yeah. be okay. The worst <laughs> is going to happen gonna is be you all right. like it. Yeah, it, exactly. it's going to be Exactly. So okay. what? Right. So what? And keep it moving. <laughs> so what advice would you give to your 22-year-old self? Stop overthinking um, and definitely don't take everything personal. Uh, it, it's not all about you. You know, we, we tend to internalize and think everything's about us. Everybody's against us. We feel sad and if something doesn't go right. It's all about you. It's not always about you. Sometimes it's about you affecting someone else right. with your struggle. Right. And then that person now grows. So it's not all about you. Mm-hmm. So, so stop, you know, stop overthinking things, stop being so sad or overly emotional about things that just may not go right, because in the end, it will work out. Mm-hmm. And that's what I would tell my 22 year old stuff. It will work out. And I, I agree. And I think, you know, shoot, I'm 46 and that's still a great reminder. You know what I mean? To, to know that if, even if things aren't going right for you, it doesn't mean that they're not going right. No, you know, and yeah. stop, stop thinking about like, like what makes you so special. Yeah. We all have issues. We all yeah. have things that go wrong. That's okay. That's part of life. It's okay. Yeah. But keep awesome. it moving. Keep it moving. Yeah. Right. Don't get stuck in that. No, no. 
No, you can't. You can't. Yeah. And life won't let you. It, it, yeah, as, long, no. as long as your heart is beating, you're getting up. <laughs> so you, you can you can sulk all you want to. But does anybody really care? Right. And life is going to keep moving. It's not like it's going to stop yeah, and wait for no. you to stop. <laughs> Nobody's stopping for you. Nobody's right. going to say, oh, you know, we're, we're all going to stay home and look at the look at the ceiling because <laughs> you're upset. <laughs> oh, I, I'm still going to go out to eat. I'm still going to have my burger. I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the phone and listen to you yap about nothing. Right. About how terrible your life is. Yeah, OK. Right. But you're sitting up in a place that you own. With right. your car, with your job, and this is so life is so terrible. I, it <laughs> is horrible. Like <laughs> but I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm gonna have a glass of wine in my hand yes. as I'm listening to you talk about how terrible your life is. So yes. I definitely would say, yeah, keep it moving. Keep yeah. it moving. Nobody cares about your problems. Keep it moving. Right. right. We have. We tend to have very high class problems. Yep. So, yep. 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 <laughs> right. We all do. We yeah. all do. So when you finish your day and you sit down with one of your favorite glasses of wine, what is on your music playlist? Anything old school. So I, and when I say old school, I love, like, I'll turn on, okay, three stations I listen to. And it's so funny, my publicist makes fun of me all the time because she calls my music that, I just want to be with you music, right? <laughs> so it's like that, that common sense, that tribe called Quest. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm into old school hip hop, um, but I also will turn on the Pandora Robert Glasper in a oh, second. Yes. Um, like that is like my stuff. But then the half ratchet that I'll listen to mm. is like the H-Town station. I love Jodeci. Yes. I love H-Town. Like, yes. like anything in that 90s, New Jack era, wow. slow cut. Um, that's what just makes me happy. It just makes me happy. I don't know any new song out. I would be lying to you if I, if I, I don't know any artists out. I have no clue. Don't care to know. Don't care to know. So I just want my Pandora with my tribe, Robert Glasper, and I'm good. <laughs> I'm good to go. I completely agree with you. I, I will, you know, I listen to the same, the same music pretty much. And, you know, but I love classical and I, I have an affinity for jazz. And but I list everything that I listen to is old. Right. Comparatively. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You think about. Absolutely. Um, because for me, number one, it has a special all this music has a special place for me. Right. I know where I was when yes, you know, memory he first came out you know i know where i yes. was when I liked my guy came out you know i i know yes. exactly where i was and what i was doing so it's got this very kind of you have this emotional connection to it and they're also kind of you know they're kind of saying something and i can understand what they're saying so i have to ask my niece sometimes who is 19 i'm like okay who is who are you listening to because i don't understand what they're right. saying and I don't I'm care. So yeah, I'm like, I'm so utterly confused. I, I don't know what they're saying. Absolutely. I don't know what's happening. And then I can't nope. watch any of the award shows because I don't know any of the people on it. So Absolutely I'm not. Nobody. watching. I'm watching. Right. I don't yep, know no clue. People. No clue. Sometimes I watch for the outfits and that's it, just from being in the fashion industry. So I'll, I'll watch that. But other than that, nah, I don't care. So yeah, yeah, anything old school. You know what? Hey, that kind of relates to wine. It ages like fine wine and... And, and I love people from the, his, the vintageness, and I, and I love it all. So, yeah, That's I'll stick with the old school. Exactly right. Stick and with I what watch, I know in life. <laughs> right. And I watch the new edition, you know, documentary series things. Like, I swear, like, six or seven times and did all the dance moves and knew all the lyrics. And I've taped it. It's on my television. <laughs> like, yeah, it's nostalgia. Yes. Ever. I think I cried when I saw it. So yeah, yes. it's just like every, every, just all the nostalgia, and, and it's, yes. it was it, it was a good time uh, in in my life that I, I can relate to back then, and, and that's uh, that's what I love. I yeah. love it. it. Puts a smile on my face. Yeah, absolutely. So before we sign off, Krishan, how can people find you and Love Corkscrew online and via social media? So please follow everything Love Corkscrew. There's no dots, no commas in between. Just Love Corkscrew. Uh, that's on Instagram, on Facebook, Love Corkscrew. Uh, you can also follow me. I'm at my capacity with friend requests, of course, on Facebook. But yeah. please follow Krishan Lampley. Um, my page is open. You'll see everything that I do. And, of course, my website. That's www.lovecorkscrew.com. Please like, hit every page. Also, uh, for those of you uh, that may not know, I have um, also a uh, Facebook page called The Love Seat. 
which I talk on my love feed about many different things happening, uh, whether it be advice and, and things in the wine industry. And I also have the wine talk. Uh, so that's also on Facebook. So follow everything Love Course Crew and you'll be able to see everything I do. Fantastic. And we'll have links in the show notes for all of this um, for our audience so you don't have to, you know, scramble to write everything down. <laughs> We'll have the good. links that you can just click to um, and get to get to work with Prashan is and where Love Corp School is. So Sounds Prashan, great. I want to thank you so much for being our guest here on The Color of Wine. I have had so much fun. I hope that you've had a great time too. And I can't wait to get your story out there. I think I think people are just gonna love it. They're gonna fall in love thank with you, you and love Cork Screw. Thanks for having me anytime and, and I appreciate everything. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode with Krishan Lampley of LCS Entertainment and Love Corkscrew Wines. All of the show notes will be posted on our website, loveandvines.com forward slash the color of wine. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Also follow us on social media at Love and Vines on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have a wonderful week. And remember, more important than the food and wine pairing is the person with whom you drink. Cheers. Cheers.